So today we've got ourselves a really exciting recovery. We got a phone call, stolen or abandoned vehicle that launched off a cliff, hit a tree, and has been left here for like a year. It's starting to leak fluid into this watershed right here. So we got a call about it and we volunteered to come get it out of here because we don't want junk left in our beautiful backyard and we don't want toxic fluids dripping into a pristine creek like this. So here we are with our equipment, tow trucks, cables, the guys, the cameras. We are gonna winch this completely total Toyota Sequoia up almost a vertical cliff, this cliff right here. So basically this vehicle has been here for, we think maybe even close to a year. We don't know the story on it. It was either stolen and abandoned or the owner sent it off the edge here and didn't have insurance and just left it. I know why they haven't recovered it yet because it is a very, very complicated task because it's straight down a cliff on the side of a highway. There's nowhere really to park a wrecker, which is why we brought our off-road wrecker and we're gonna give it a pull. I don't think you can tell how bad this is. In fact, there's no way. This is easily 100 yards, if not maybe 200 yards. Straight down the bottom of that ravine, you can kind of see it through the trees. And yeah, it's- You've been driven down there. <laughs> that's the crazy part. It took me forever to figure out what happened because it literally looks like somebody was driving up the creek. So to help you understand, when we get down there, it's gonna look like it was driving up the creek and hit a tree. That's not what happened because no vehicle could possibly drive up that creek. So my theory, based off of what I've seen, is that it came somewhere along here. I don't think it came through the guardrail because that guardrail is pretty stout. I think it somehow came on this side of the guardrail and ended up right over here and then went straight down this and hit a tree. And you'll see because down there, there's a broken fence post. The wildest part about all of this though is... All right, guys, wait, hey, hold on. Just one second, all right? We're gonna get to that in just a second, but first, I gotta talk to you about how we pay for everything on all these trips that we go on. Because we spend a lot of money on all sorts of stuff. Gas, food, trinkets. We buy a lot of trinkets. I personally have a trinket collection that would just absolutely blow your mind. It would blow your crazy uncle's mind, but I digress. Here's the deal. As we were traveling to all these crazy locations and doing all these crazy things and meeting all these crazy people, we realized that we needed a bank account that could keep up. That's when we found... <laughs> Current Visa debit card. Guys, this thing is legit. Current is basically the future of banking, okay? It's a mobile bank account that just goes where you go. So you don't have to go to the bank branch and deal with the guy that smells like mothballs. No, you don't have to see him anymore. You got your paycheck, well, guess what? Take your phone out, take a picture of it, bam. Instantly deposited into your current bank account. How about you get a little behind on bills and you don't have enough cash in your account to pay for that thing that you're trying to buy. Well, Current offers up to $100 of overdraft protection. So it turns out you do have the money for that trinket that you don't need, but you really want. Another great feature of Current is you can connect your paychecks to direct deposit and get your checks up to two days earlier than when you get it normally from your employer. So guys, wherever you go on your trips, whether it be the moon or Egypt or the beach or the green screen room, in the upstairs stuffy office building you work in, guys, the current card is legit. It's simple, it's easy to use, takes less than two minutes to apply for, and they ship you the card for free. We use it on all of our trips, and I encourage you to use it on all of your trips. Click the link in my description below to get signed up for your current card now. After going down a 200 yard embankment, which is pretty damn steep, there's no indication of it having rolled over. So it literally just shot straight down this hill, hit a tree and then spun about 90 degrees. Guys, this is gonna blow your mind. This is actually, it took me forever. The other day as I came up here and looked at it, I was just like, how did this happen? The end of what's even weirder, it gets weirder. All the doors were locked. One of the windows was completely broken out. The front of the car is ripped off and the keys removed. So somebody after it was wrecked was like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna take the stereo. I'm gonna lock the doors and I'm gonna take the key even though you could just reach through the broken window and open it. However, I don't think it was the owner who left it there because all the registration paperwork is still in there, all of the vehicle information, but the stereo is stolen. So it's like, was it stolen and abandoned or was it abandoned by the owner and they claimed insurance? Who knows? All I know is this property, we're so proud of our state. We're proud of where we live. This area is way too pristine to leave a wrecked vehicle at the bottom of a ravine. So 
48 degrees is a 48 degree slope that's steep 48 is more than 45 right by three. three by three so it's steeper than a 45 just a hair which yeah to give you a to give you an idea 45 degrees is damn near close to max of what you could walk up and down without having to use your hands in fact you'll see that you probably will have to use your hands getting up and down some of this because it gets steeper and muddier towards the bottom part of the crew missed the memo that we were gonna come here uh and rightfully so i, I don't blame hunter he's he was way behind because he's driving the five ton the five ton only does like 50 50 miles five miles an hour um, so combination of our lack of patience to go 50 miles an hour on the, on the freeway and poor communication on where we were going in the first place led Bud to Morgan, which is a solid 20 miles from here and Hunter, we don't know where he's at. We're going to wait, uh, we're going to wait for Hunter to get here in the five ton. As soon as he gets here, we're going to get him positioned right here. And then we've got the, our other tow truck here, which we're going to use to a anchor the five ton so that. It doesn't try to continue down the hill. Um, and B, once we do have the vehicle up here, we're gonna load it on the bed of that and then take it back to the shop. So here's, this could go one of two ways. It could be super breezy, no sweat. The winch could pull it straight up the hill or it could start like that and then something breaks or starts to slide and then it just starts a chain reaction. It won't be anywhere in the middle. It's not gonna be kind of hard. It's either gonna be easy or it's gonna be a total show, right Jim? That's yeah, we'll, goes, we'll right? get it. We'll get it to the truck, and then it'll break and roll clear to the bottom. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but it'll get pinned between two large trees yeah. on the second roll, and yeah. somehow we'll have to knock out a tree. Guys, guy right there, his hands down. One of my favorite builds we've ever done. Um, it was a fire truck. I bought it up at an auction as a full-blown fire truck. Drove it home from uh, Washington and turned it into a tow truck. Put the rollback bed on it put a really heavy duty rear axles on it from a Kenworth. Um, made the whole thing a crew cab. So it's got seating for like eight dudes in there. The fire trucks are built really stout um, and they have a lot of power and they're designed to haul a lot of people and get to situations really quickly. So it makes a perfect tow truck because that thing is literally designed to go just about anywhere. Even though it's not um, four wheel drive or six wheel drive, the two rear axles lock and it's got big off-road tires. So it'll go pretty much anywhere. It's got the huge Miller bed on it. That bed, it's like literally just one of the best beds that they make. And Miller sent it out to us uh, for the TV show when we built it and it has just been rock solid. It's literally just been one of my best vehicles. Um, it's been one of the ones that we've held on to the very longest. The only thing we don't like about this truck is what Jim's working on right now. How's that going over there? Well, when you get going about 40, yeah. this thing goes like this. We noticed that on the highway that you were just looking at yourself. Just go blindside. <laughs> so when you do a, a, a right-hand merge, yeah. it's just... Just Jesus, take the wheel. Just take it. <laughs> so the mirrors are... Well, the problem is the front of this truck is so damn wide, and then you've got mirrors beyond that. So when we go through the front gate at our shop, without fail, you get this right here. Nick, knock, knock, knock. And then this side, obviously, got hit much harder. I don't know if you guys have seen this. If you've seen the TV show, you saw it, but look how freaking sweet this is. It's got Ford Lariat interior. It's filthy in here right now, but Ford Lariat back seat. Got jump seats right there, like road wire leather. Uh, guys, this truck is just, it's just the bee's knees, the cat's pajamas. Right, Jim? I think it drives really nice. It does drive really nice. Like, after I get in it, I'm I always like, my God, I'm a fire truck. But after I get in it, it's just like, sorry. You remember how much you love it. Floating on the pillow. Yep. Takes the bumps. Just, it's just like you're huh? driving a huge yacht. Over That's exactly waves. what it is. We do need to probably get rid of this giant doghouse. But it's nice to put your arm on it. Yeah, we could probably build armrests, though. Yeah. Because this thing's just obnoxious. And underneath there is actually a really nice cover that didn't need to be covered with quilted fabric. It's been in here for two years. Yeah. <laughs> it just needs a good clean out. It just, just needs a little bit of love. This poor truck has been so neglected. We just never had the time to finish it. And always like the shop projects like this that belong to the shop are always the ones that receive the least amount of attention. Even though they're the ones that probably deserve the most. I love this truck though. 
I think we're gonna hot tub just finish her out you know maybe just finish the trim we had a guy working for us back in the day who who insisted on doing the interior great guy did a decent job but then he also did stuff like this that's a Home Depot lamp cord connected to Home Depot LED lights I don't know if you know this or not but this is this is not a vehicle plug vehicles run on 12 volt or 24 volt it thinks it's 24 volt this is 110 volt like house so well, there's no plug-in for that, so we're going to get rid of all the Home Depot components. We're going to finish out trimming out some of the stuff. We're going to get rid of the plywood that's built into the ceiling, which has fallen once on my good friend um, Joey D from uh, Foral Parts and RJ Anderson. Just finish it up. Give it a little bit of love. I say all this, and then it'll probably go back to the sharp and get parked in the back, and then I probably won't think about it again until we need it. The following Thursday. We got our uh, five ton wrecker finally here after a little detour. So the plan is, like I said, we're gonna back it as close to the edge of the cliff here as we can. And then the trick with this is gonna be to get this truck as level and straight as possible. There's two winches back here. There's the big crane winch, and then there's the big, big rear puller. That winch right there on the crane is not ideal. It, it, it's meant for like lifting rather than pulling. So what we're gonna do, since we need somewhere to hide a pull from, I don't wanna pull from down low. So we're gonna take the rear low winch and string it up through a snatch block through the crane so that it's pulling up. Because the last thing we wanna do is be dragging our wire and stuff through the actual dirt and stuff. So we're gonna try to keep it in the air as much as possible. It's gonna be a little bit challenging. The thick brush is forgiving, but it's not super forgiving. And our angle here, we're kind of embedded in front of these trees. So we'll see, uh, see if it wants to come out. We think it's about 400 feet from the tow truck to the wrecked car. What I think happened is the car came straight down through there. You can see a broken fence post and it just literally came straight down that hill. Um, airbags went off, doors are all locked, keys are out of it. So the plan is to basically hook up to the front right here and then just winch kind of straight up that. Um, it's gonna be a heavy, heavy pull because we're pulling dead weight straight up a hill and I think it's still in gear and the tires are flat. So it's gonna be tricky. Here we go. This, ladies and gentlemen, is gonna be, I know I always say it, this will be one of the most difficult recoveries we've ever done just because we're pulling dead weight straight up a hill and we don't have a great place to park the uh, winch truck up at the top. So here we go, good luck. To show you how steep this hillside really is, we're going to uh, film and hike, which isn't a great idea on my part it's gonna show you how out of shape I am. But uh, I'm about halfway up the hill right here. You can see the top of the boom of the wrecker right there. The vehicle I think came down right here, went through this fence post, went down and hit that tree. It's gnarly, gnarly hillside. We're gonna be using every inch of rope on the winch and every ounce of power that it has to drag that dead weight up the hill. I'm hoping we can do it, oh gosh, this is so steep. I'm hoping we can do it in single line without having to run a snatch block because if we have to run a snatch block, that complicates things a little bit because then we're gonna need more cable. We would have to double the line back to itself. I'm pretty sure that winch, as long as it's functioning properly, will have enough grunt to be able to pull it. But I guess now we wait and see. But this is so steep. Like the reason why I think this car has been down here for so long, close to a year, is nobody knows about it. I don't think, I think there's very few people that actually know it's there because it's in such a uh, hidden spot. In fact, I never even saw it until I flew over in my helicopter like six months ago and spotted it from the air and then started doing some homework and figuring out 
what we could do to help them get it out, which is what leads us to where we're at today. All right, so uh, winch line is all hooked up. We ran roughly 200 feet of winch off the truck, plus an additional two lengths of 100 foot cable. So roughly 400 feet, like we thought. We're hooked to the front of the car and uh, everything looks good. My only concerns are the bottom there is really, really steep. And then we run into a little batch of trees that we have to go through. Um, so that could hold it up. And then my biggest concern is, see how the tow truck is kind of angled back like this? I wish it wasn't angled back like that because um, being like that is gonna make it want to tip back even further. So my concern is that pulling from right here on the crane is gonna put enough leverage on it that the truck's maybe gonna wanna start tipping backwards. If it does, we're gonna have to reposition the truck and figure out a different way to uh, position this because we can't have it start tipping like that. That's, that's not good. And we tried using the tow truck to anchor the front of this truck, but it's at such a weird angle that it's not really doing much. So if this starts to tip or move, then we're gonna stop, back this truck up a little bit more and reposition. But it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, you gotta remember this truck is 25, 30,000 pounds compared to the Toyota, which is five, 6,000 pounds. Um, so hopefully, Hopefully we can beat gravity here, but we're about to give it a try. We're gonna set up the GoPro so you guys get a beautiful shot of the vehicle coming up the hill. But before I start this, I want, to, I want you to place your bets. Drop your guesses in the comments below and let me know if you think we're gonna get it first pull, no problems, or do you think we're gonna break a cable? Are we gonna to have to reposition the truck? Let me know what you think the outcome is gonna be before we start running that winch. Drop in the comments below. Whoever's the closest before, like one of the first comments that's the closest, We'll send you out a swag pack, deal? I think we're ready. Check this out. We got the drone in the air right now, hovering over the vehicle. So I can actually watch what it's doing from right here, from the monitor on the phone, because I can't see down the hill. Technology's the best. Nice job, Murph. So it looks like it's moving pretty good. Uh, starting up the hill, which is the part that was I'm most nervous about. Nothing sketchy yet, however, you can hear all of the winch cable and all the components kind of creaking and moaning. It's coming though, and the truck is staying pretty well planted, which is nice. A few inches later. The riskiest thing about doing a recovery like this is broken cables. These cables store a lot of energy, so when you're winching, if something breaks, all that energy's got to go somewhere. So it's not uncommon for people to get whacked by broken cables and stuff like that. So that's why we're going to be extra cautious to not overload the system. When something starts to bind, we're going to stop and re-rig. Guys, look at it. She's coming. This is, I'm not mad about this. I'm not gonna celebrate yet, but it's going pretty smooth. Yeah, way more than anybody else has done this thing so far. Nobody else dared even touch this thing. And I don't blame them. It's a very complicated recovery. All the tow truck drivers are watching this like, I did that one when I was 
almost seven years old. Okay, I get it. We're professionals. We're hobbyists. So this is the trickiest part right here. This is probably the steepest part of the hill and it's where the most trees are. So hope it, ooh, you can hear the load on that thing big time. Just hoping there's no trees that are stout enough to be able to stop it. And, oh look, we're almost at the end of the winch cable. So now what we're gonna do is once we get this cable to the hook, we're gonna stop, reset, and uh, go back down with the cable because obviously we're running out of line. Now we got our safety chain that's going to hold the vehicle on the hill while we reset the winch line. All the way to the car, sitting vertically on the hill, is on this line right here. That's holding it in place while you re-rig the cable. This is the tricky part right here. It's, it's mowing through some trees, putting a heavy load on it. That was a big load on this thing. But it's still pulling. I mean, I can see the car now, so... That's crazy. I can't believe how much grunt this thing has. Just pulls and pulls and pulls. It's a good purchase. And I bought this thing for like 10 grand on eBay. Like, when the military bought it back in the 80s, they probably paid 250 grand. So, that's why I love military surplus. Just stout. It requires a lot of maintenance. A lot of love. You gotta keep up on it, but look at it. It's a hell of a unit. Hell of a unit. A flatbed on it. We did it! We're getting good! This man! A little bit of planning, it's crazy what that does! It is crazy. The day before, maybe check if things have oil and stuff. Ah, nah, nah. Don't get ahead of yourself, man. We did. We checked for oil. This time. We checked for everything. Guys, we freaking did it. Look at that. Toyota is loaded on the tow truck. We pulled it up the hill with literally no complications. That was absolutely insane. Because guys, that was, I don't, videos and pictures aren't doing this justice. That hill is super steep. So the fact that uh, we were able to pull it up, not break any cables or ropes or anything, the old uh, five ton record definitely did its job. We got that loaded up. We're gonna go uh, take it back to the shop and then obviously uh, figure out with the cops or whoever who abandoned it and where it needs to go. Uh, remember, we didn't get paid to do this. This was just a volunteer uh, job for the property owner here. And uh, it's a good thing we did it because with the spring runoff that's getting ready to uh, rush through this creek, the water level was raising every day and it was about to be in the water again, which like I said, putting oil and all sorts of contamination in this creek, not a good thing. So glad we got it out in time and hope you guys enjoyed that recovery because that was, uh, that was pretty damn smooth, I'm not gonna lie. I'm definitely not gonna get my hopes up that they all go that smooth because that was that was uncommon. In fact, I'm still waiting for like the hood to fly off or something as we're driving home. Something, something gotta happen. That was a very complicated recovery that went extremely well. In fact, suspiciously well. I'm still I'm still waiting for it to like fall off the tow truck or something. We have the vehicle back here at the shop. Now we're gonna do some digging on whose it might be, who it belongs to, the story on it. So if we do find more information, we will let you know and possibly do a part two or like a follow-up. If not, then I might just sit there and you'll never see it again. Either way, that was some entertainment and a hell of a recovery. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy, I would appreciate a subscribe. Don't have to if you don't want to, but if you do, I will reward you by entering your name in the hat to win any one of my toys when we hit 750,000 subscribers, which is like very close. We're almost there. So like, comment, subscribe, and enjoy.